Okay, and welcome to tutorial number four. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add grid views, which will display records that have been added. One grid view for students and one grid view for teachers. For this, I'm going to add another page. Right click the uh, website and add a new item. And it's going to be, of course, a web form. And I'm going to call this page grid views that ASPX add. Let me just quickly format it. I'm going to add an H3 tag here for students. And another div with another H3 tag for the heading for teachers. Let me capitalize that. Go back to the design, go back to the students. I'm going to do a, an enter here to make a P tag and drop a grid view. And we're going to need to create a new data source for this. And it's going to be an object data source. I'm going to call it students object da data source. Okay. We're going to choose the students table adapter. Get data, finish. And that looks cool. Let's go do the same for the teachers. New object data source. Teacher stable adapter. And finish. Now, when we run this, this will only display the data and nothing else. Let's close this down and add some functionality to these grid views. Click on the grid view on the little arrow here on the side. We're going to enable editing, deleting, and sorting. Let's do the same for the teachers. Deleting, editing, and sorting. And let's run this. And as you can see, we could sort, delete, which I'm not going to do in a moment, as well as add it, as well as added the records. As you can see, I can't edit the full name because it's really a collection uh, of this field and that field. I'm going to cancel. Now we could edit this field, this the records and the students as well. The only problem with it is, is that the teachers field editing field is not a drop down. Instead, it's a text box, and what we wanted to do is restrain, uh, you know, choosing, putting in the teacher field to the teachers that already exists. So what what we can do is change this text box in the editing mode of the grid view to a drop down list of the teacher's full name. I'm going to show you how to do that right away. What we need to do is the following: click on this little arrow, edit columns go to the teacher and convert this field into a template field. Click on OK. Then we're going to click on Edit Templates. And we're going to go to the Edit Item Template. Takes the text box and right click and delete it. Go to the toolbox and get a drop down list and drop it in there. OK. We're going to choose a data source for this. It's going to be the teacher's object data source, of course. We're going to display full name. And the value is going to be full name as well. And one more thing, edit data bindings. We're going to choose the teacher because we only want this to happen for the, for the teacher and not everything else. Click on OK. And when we try... Well, actually, let's end template editing and let's run this and see if this works for us. Now, watch what happens when I click on edit. I think it's going to bum out. It certainly did, because the drop down list one has a selected value which is invalid because it does not exist in the list of items. And the list of items, of course, <coughs> which are being displayed at the teacher's names. However, uh, the value 
that it has saved in the SQL for that particular student is nothing because originally we did not add a teacher for it because it was one of the first records. So we're going to gonna have we're gonna have to fix this. We're gonna again click on this grid view, <clears throat> my little arrow, edit templates. We're gonna go ahead and edit item templates. Click on this drop down list, go to the source code. And actually, before we do that, what we need to do is go ahead and edit items. We're going to add a new item. Text is going to be select. And we're just going to delete the value for now. Click on OK. Then we're going to go to the source. And it's the value which is going to be showing is going to be select. And I don't think that helps us. Uh, because we need to set the value to equals two double quotes, which shows that the value is nothing. Go back to the design, and we should be okay. I'll just double check to make sure. Source value is nothing. And let's make let's change the ID so we'll be able to re uh, refer to it better if need be. DDL select teacher. Okay, and we should be good now. Let's see. Now the initial value. Oh, it's not going to work either. And I'm, I'm going to explain to you why. Edit. Again, we have the same problem. Because one little thing we forgot to do. Again, edit template. Edit item template. And we need to go to the property of this of this uh, drop-down list. And we're going to go to the append data bound items it's selected to false and we're going to select it to true so in other words any item that we add on top of the bound data bound items which are going to be the teachers full names we want to be able to append add other items as well which we hard code into the drop down list now that should take care of it now let's go on end template editing Let's run this again. <clears throat> Let's edit this. Hey, the first item that we have is, of course, select, which has no value. And that's where it's able to load it because at the moment Baruch Cypher does not have a teacher uh, selected, uh, did not have a teacher saved to him. But now we could uh, give him uh, a teacher. And select the teacher and it's going to be George Bush and we're going to click on update and George Bush, George Bush is in there fantastic thanks so much for watching I think this pretty much wraps up creating a good starter ASP website database driven website while using uh, an SXD data set uh, while learning a few cool tricks as we go along, such as adding a drop-down list into a grid views uh, edit mode.